We've got the overall size and shape of the printer constructed now with all three axes installed and ready for the next steps. The print head as well as the heat bed. All the printed parts and fasteners needed for this chapter are conveniently included in the box labelled print head and heat bed. So with that to hand we're ready to begin. And we're going to start with the smaller electronics box first within which we have the main hot end assembly with its large heat sink containing the filament guide which goes from top to bottom of course where we have the pre-installed 0.4mm nozzle. So proceed to mount this to the X carriage by holding up against the carriage trapping the bearings in between. There are notches in the carriage ensuring correct alignment. After which we can secure from the rail with two M3 by 20 screws, one up top and another just below. While we're here we'll get the print fan installed next, so making sure that the sticker on the fan is facing the opposite direction. Proceed to insert the bottom edge of the fan so it hooks into place before rotating the top into position. This can be a tight squeeze so be careful and once the top holes are lined up secure with a single M3 by 20 screw. None of these screws need to go in super tight as we're still working with plastic parts here so a nice snug fit is all that's required. We'll stick with fans for the moment and move on to installing the cooling fan next. We'll also need the mini fan spacer for this step so with that to hand place the fan on top of the spacer in this orientation aligning the holes and making sure that the fan sticker is facing the rear. Also note the fan cable facing the upper left side in line with the teeth of the plastic spacer. While holding both parts together place them on the left side of the heatsink so that the holes align with the heatsink and secure into position with a single M3 by 20 screw into the upper left hole. Don't tighten too much just yet as we may need some adjustment space later. Also leave the opposite hole empty for now since we need to get our sensor assembly in place first which we'll do next. So with the small super pinder sensor holder in hand, insert a single M3 lock nut into the side making sure to insert all the way down fully into the recess. Again use a screw from the opposite side to pull into place if need be. And with that done we can place the holder onto the side of the hot end fan taking care not to pinch the hot end cables and secure from the left side with a single M3 by 12 screw, only tighten until snug. Double check the hot end cables to ensure they're not being pinched at all before securing the right side with an M3 by 20 screw going through the holder, the fan, the spacer and into the heatsink itself. And finally give the upper fan screw a last tighten. With the holder secure we'll get the sensor in position next. So begin by inserting an M3 by 12 screw into the remaining hole just enough so it begins to bite for now. Before we push the sensor down into position just enough so that four or five of the threads are showing through the bottom. Before tightening down the screw to secure in place. Again do not over tighten, we may need to fine tune the sensor position later. For now with our cable bundle slowly building up and looking a little messy it's time to get this neatened. So grab a small cable clip from the bag of parts and proceed to push all cables from the print head into the clip. Note the orientation of the clip here, the beveled side is facing upwards. That leaves us with the print fan cable which goes in the wrong direction so create a small loop and feed in back through the correct way, we'll secure this in a moment. For now slide the clip down and mount it to the fan spacer using a single M3 by 20 screw. This goes straight into plastic so take care not to over tighten and strip out any threads. Once tightened release the screw a quarter turn since the clip should be able to move freely. Next we'll need a textile sleeve, you'll find two in the package, we need to use the longer of the two for this next step. So with that to hand proceed to wrap around the cable bundle starting from the print head end. Once you have a couple of inches wrapped push only the sleeve up the cable bundle and through the clip so it extends a few millimeters beyond the other end of the clip. If you struggle here release the screw a little to provide more space and push the sleeve through before retightening the clip just enough so that it can still move freely. This also now secures the print fan cable loop we created although make sure there's not too much slack in the loop. After which we can insert the remaining cable bundle down the entire length of the textile sleeving which can get fiddly but persevere until you reach the end. 
We now need to guide the newly wrapped cables down towards the electronics board, but ensuring we leave enough slack for the print head to move around freely. To do this, begin by rotating the Z-axis screw gently so that the X-axis is at the highest position, and then move the print head all the way to the right side. In essence, this is the furthest the print head can possibly travel from the electronics board. Next, from the rear, insert two zip ties through the available holes in the extruder, leaving them open for the moment. And now, bending the cable bundle very slightly, guide it towards the extruder. And secure into this position by tightening the two inserted zip ties. Note that while tightening, ensure the heads are rotated to the left. We still have the extruder cable loose at this point, so now it's time to insert it into the sleeve alongside the print head cables, all the way down to the bottom. After which we can insert a third zip tie into the bottom of the extruder, and secure the bundle in place, now with the extruder cable included as well of course, and again with the head to the left. This is important since otherwise the print head could hit the zip ties and cause problems while in use. We can now trim the excess off each zip tie, as close to the head as possible, and then slightly twist the sleeve, not the cables inside, this will ensure the sleeve evenly wraps all around the cable bundle. The final step with the print head involves installing the head PTFE tube, with its brass connectors pre-installed on each side. Both ends are identical, so insert one end into place on the brass fitting on the extruder, and then screw into position so it's nice and snug. Use the universal wrench if required. And the other end onto the top of the print head. Again, use the wrench for a nice snug fit. And that's our print head now complete. Moving it slowly and gently from side to side, you should see the cable bundle flex as in my example here. Ok, so now it's time to install our heat bed, which fortunately is a rather quick and easy process. We'll be concentrating on the rear terminals to start with, along with the heat bed cables. Notice the ends, one red and one black. Begin by inserting two M3x8 screws through the top of each hole, and with the board flipped, from the bottom place the red wire on the left screw and the black wire on the right. Before securing into position with M3 lock nuts on each, use an allen key on the screw head and the universal wrench on the nut to tighten both firmly down into place. The cable cover, which will be installed later, requires the connectors to be slightly inclined towards each other. Hold them in this position while tightening, but leave a small gap between them, as shown here. Double check to ensure the cables are connected properly and the screws are tightened fully. Improper wiring or a loose connection to the heat bed can fatally damage the electronics. Next, guide the black thermistor cable between the heat bed cables, splitting the plastic cable cover a little should you need to, and leaving just a little slack at the heat bed end, wrap the cable a few times around the heat bed cables to keep them together before using the remaining textile sleeve to cover and contain the cables neatly together. We'll get these connectors covered and secured now with the two plastic parts that cover the top and bottom, trapping the connectors in between. Starting with the bottom, insert a single M3 lock nut into the bottom side, before placing in under the heat bed cable connectors. Make sure the connectors fit properly into the cover. At the same time, ensure the textile sleeve is as far forward as possible, enough so that it gets trapped in the neck of the cover, before placing the top cover down, making sure not to pinch any cables, and securing with a single M3x12 screw. This should completely cover the heat bed connectors while not pinching the thermistor wires, yet tight enough so that the textile sleeve is trapped in between and cannot come loose. And with that, the heat bed is prepared and can now be installed onto the main wire carriage assembly. So proceed to pull the wire carriage all the way to the front so it's easy to work on, before lowering the heat bed carefully on top of the wire carriage, ensuring that the heat bed cables are facing the rear of the printer. Align all nine holes on the heat bed with the heat bed spacers, after which we can insert the nine M3x4 screws in the holes. Don't fully tighten the screws just yet, just get them in place for now so that they bite into the threads in the nuts below. And once all 9 screws are loosely in place, meaning the heat bed is properly aligned on top of the wire carriage, tighten each screw beginning with the centre, all 4 sides, and finally the 4 corners.
And with that, our print head assembly is in place and ready to go, as well as the heat bed. The printer has really taken shape now and we're almost complete with the build. On to the final few stages, the next being the display screen and electronics.